Well, good day, Darlington County School District, and welcome back to another In the Know, where I have a chance to update you about the last board meeting that we had, as well as other items that are going on across the Darlington County School District. Well, here we are, the middle of April, and it seems like it has turned from winter to summer without passing through spring at this point in time. It is in the upper 80s, lower 90s all of this week, uh, which is great, but at the same time, we kind of miss springtime a little bit. So I'm sure you all are having a chance to enjoy the outdoors, probably work in the yard a little bit, and enjoy that time with your family outside as well. We had a board meeting this past Monday, and I want to review the items that were discussed. First of all, we had some academic achievement awards uh, as well as athletic awards. So it was always, always good to have awards with our students and their families that are able to participate in the board meetings with us. By the way, that meeting was at Bay Road Elementary School. So because we are out of our district office right now for renovations, we are having other meetings in different locations across the district. And Monday evening's board meeting was at Bay Road uh, Elementary School. Next month's board meeting, regular board meeting, will be at the Mayo Conference Center. So we look forward to being around at our different locations across the district, but also having our parents with us and publicizing to our parents and our community that our board meetings are being held in different locations. And we would really like folks to come out and visit with us for a board meeting to try to get that engagement from our community. We had a presentation from our lead social worker, Mrs. Campbell, and she had a chance to give us the update for social workers and family school facilitators, and of course, all the work that they do with our students and our families. I know last month we celebrated those folks, and I saw where in all of our buildings you were able to recognize them. But once again, I want to say thank you for all of the work that our social workers and school facilitators do for our schools, for our students, for our families. They are called on all the time, all different hours of the day, and they are always focused on doing what's best for our students. So we appreciate them and appreciated the presentation that Mrs. Campbell gave as well. We also had an update on our athletic turf fields. And so we had a chance to have our bids come in and we've been able to save some money on those fields from the first time that we bid them. And so we're really looking forward to getting started on this. So at this point in time, it will be at Hartsfall High School's Kellytown Stadium and Darlington High School football stadium will have new turf fields to start their football season next year. As far as the Lamar turf field, they also will be receiving turf fields in the future. Because the Lamar football field is tied in with the Lamar baseball field, it's a little bit more complex installation, and so we're having to delay that for a year but they are definitely going to be receiving the artificial turf fields for both football and baseball in Lamar. And so I'm really excited for our players and our students and our fans to be able to have some things that they see some of our competitors have, especially our, our players. They, they want to be able to play on those surfaces and in the environments where they're, we are playing other teams. And I'm excited for the way that this will appear to others when they come to visit us from the outside. But most importantly, the playing surface itself, it's a safe surface for our kids. It's a durable surface that will last at least 10 years. And again, just the looks uh, of how we appear to others that are visiting with us, I'm really excited about this project moving forward. And remember that our turf fields are part of our capital monies. Remember, we, we talk about a lot during budget times that we have two pots of money that, that we work from. And one pot is capital monies that we have. And of course, that can only be spent on capital improvements, which is construction, 
uh, different types of athletic types of facility upgrades, uh, technology, all those things we are only allowed to use capital monies for. We cannot use our operating budget for that and vice versa. And then of course our operating budget is what we use for primarily all the salaries. And so 90% of our operating budget is in all of our salaries that we have for our employees. And the other 10% is typically supplies and some of the other general accounts that are in the district. And we had a chance to continue to update on where we are with the budget at this point in time. And so as we receive information from the State Department, we are able to get a little bit more information on how that's going to impact our budget. And so, for example, raises. I know a lot of people have been asking about raises and what does that look like in the Darlington County School District. And I don't have an exact answer today, but what I can say is that at the state level, of course, there are several different versions for teacher pay raises. And of course, internally, we're looking at other raises for all of our other uh, employees as well. So just know there will be some raise this year. There will be some form of raise for everybody across the school district. We're just having to fine tune what that looks like at this point in time. And because we haven't received all the information from the state, primarily from the legislators, that we are still having to wait before we can finalize all of that. But there will be a raise next year for everybody in the school district, and we certainly will share those details once we have finalized them with everybody. We've talked about raises, but we've also talked about positions in the school district, and primarily positions that have been affected by the ESSER funding that is expiring at the end of this school year. And then also how we are adhering to our student-teacher ratios and the impact that adhering to those ratio has had on a few positions across the district too. And so there are two different cases, but they both affect our schools. And so, again, extra information about that. And what I can say is, as far as the student-teacher ratios, again, adhering to the 20 to 1 for elementary target and the 25 to 1 for high school and middle school target. Uh, by adhering to those, we are able to efficiently use our monies for all positions across the district. And I will say that those student-teacher ratios are lower than a lot of school districts across the state. I've talked to a lot of my peers over the past couple months and many of them have higher student-teacher ratios. And if you remember when we started down this road, that was non-negotiable for me. I want to make sure that we stay at 20 to 1 for elementary and 25 to 1 for high school and middle school target student-teacher ratios. By adhering to those ratios, again, as I mentioned, being efficient with the use of our monies, there's actually some positives that have come out of this process. And so, for example, academic interventionists. We're able to provide an academic interventionist to every elementary school in the district for next school year. And so some buildings already have through Title I, maybe a reading interventionist, and so this additional Academic interventionists will probably wind up being a math interventionist. But there are some schools that don't get Title I monies, and so those schools will be able to utilize this academic interventionist in the way they deem most appropriate in their particular building. Another positive is that we are able to have Spanish and computer science offerings at our middle school for next school year. I'm really excited about this for our students and for our parents. We've heard this over the years about uh, being able to provide this for our middle school students. And I'm so excited that we're actually able to do it now. And that's where our middle school students can get high school credit for Spanish and for computer science before they even move on to high school. So there's more offerings 
for our students, but also the ability to take a language in middle school and to take the next sequence of courses at the high school. So really excited about that. And then lastly, we are able to add a new gifted and talented program for grades two through five starting next year as well. And you've heard me talk a little bit about this, but we're going to have a cadre of teachers that will be going to our elementary schools and providing GT services in pull-out fashion to those students. We have currently over 160 plus identified students in grades two through five GT. And so our parents have asked for this, our principals have asked for this, our teachers have asked for this. So we're excited to get that program started for next school year. And again, by being efficient with our resources, we're actually able to have a lot of positive additions for next year as well. Another item with the budget that was discussed was our Darlington County Virtual Academy. And I actually messaged to our board audience that was with us online and in person, as well as the board, that the Darlington County Virtual Academy will be transitioning to a new digital program. That new program is called DCSD Digital 360. Carla Jefferson, who is currently the principal of the Darlington County Virtual Academy, will be the director of DCSD Digital 360. There are changes that are coming with this program. For example, we will not be offering virtual digital programming to elementary school students. This program will primarily be for middle school and high school, as well as some of our special needs students and special education classes that we have. There will be a new application process for our middle school students. And criteria will be based on being able to be successful in a digital environment, but also specific medical needs that require being in a digital environment. There's no real change to the high school model that we have, but the same principles of being successful in a digital environment will be adhered to in order to allow a student to be in the high school digital learning program. We've had a chance to talk with the staff at the Darlington County Virtual Academy, and let me let me say what a great job they have done. We started in 2020 with over 3,500 students during COVID. And Ms. Jefferson and the staff that was with her and that has been with her since then did an incredible job of working us through some very difficult times. So we want to be able to say thank you to the staff and the teachers that have helped our students in the program. And know that DCSD Digital 360 is a new program that has a lot of promise. And we look forward to seeing how that program not only could grow in the Darlington County School District, but possibly throughout the PD as well. Also at the board meeting, talked a little bit about some other initiatives that are going on. Of course, the communications audit update. We completed that, and I um, appreciate everybody's input on that, whether you participated through surveys or you might have been in a user group that was able to have discussions, but we're really looking forward to get back the results from that communications audit in ways that will help us primarily communicate internally but communicate externally too. And so thank you for all of your input on that and you'll be hearing a lot more about this in the near future. I also talked a little bit about our 
Cognia review that is going on right now. And if you'll recall, Cognia was advanced ed before that, and before that it was SAC. So every five years, we have a, an accreditation review where it's now Cognia is actually having a chance to come into the district and review. Many of you all may have been asked to serve on user groups for this review as well. It's taking place this week, the week of April 15th, and then we'll be finished with it. And so this is very different than what it's been in the past. If you recall in the past, the accreditation teams would come into town. They were all from out of town. They would stay in hotels. We would have to transport them in six to eight cars and we'd drive all over the school district and visit schools and they would observe classrooms and they would sit down with groups across the district and take lots of notes. And so that has all transformed into being done virtually. So everything is on a Zoom screen now and we are providing all of our information electronically and they are conducting interviews via Zoom. And that process again will be over after this week and we look forward to seeing how they assess how we have grown in the past five years from the last time we had our review. So there'll be a final report that goes out to the school board and of course that will be at a televised board meeting as well. A couple other items on the list. Uh, April is School Library Month, and April 4th was School Librarian Day. And it's, it's odd for me to say librarian because really they're, they're media specialists. And so a shout out to our media specialists and the help that they have as well, our media assistants. Thank you for all you do for our schools. And I know it's a busy time of year for you as well as we are working to get closer to testing and you're seeing groups of students in the media center. April 1st through the 5th was National Assistance, Assistant Principals Week. And so thank you to all of our assistant principals that we have across the district and the work that you do. I know you are appreciated in your buildings by staff and teachers and of course your principals as well. We are coming up on state testing and so as you know the month of May is reserved for all of our end of year tests and so we have SC Ready that will be starting we have MAP for our K through second grade students that will be starting and of course our end of course tests and exams that will be starting for all of our students across the district the Darlington Raceway, it is that time of year again. We have tickets. Uh, that race is on May 12th, Sunday, May the 12th, and we have reduced rate tickets that are available through the Office of Communications. Audrey Childers sent an email out and with all the details that you'll need to purchase tickets. So look for that email from Audrey Childers. But again, the Raceway has graciously provided us with reduced rate tickets for our employees. Orange Frog. So this month's Orange Frog Challenge is Let Your Orange Bloom. And of course, that's in conjunction with springtime and flowers blooming and trees blooming and pollen. But more importantly, letting kindness bloom in your buildings and in your community. And so I've seen lots of examples where you are utilizing that monthly challenge in your building, giving back to each other, and also giving out to your communities. Next month's challenge is Orange Crush Your Tests. And so it is focused around the whole testing time and getting our students focused and prepared to be able to do the best they possibly can on those days when they're having to do the testing. And on that note of Orange Frog, we've been meeting with our charter committee, which has representation from every school and every building across the district. You're gonna to start to see some changes to our Orange Frog initiative. 
but it's not going away, first of all. We, we are not doing away with the initiative, and we're not adding in a new initiative. What we're doing is transitioning from Orange Frog to Darlington County School District. And so what you're going to see is we're still going to have our monthly challenges. We're still going to have our random act of kindness. But it will be branded with the Darlington County School District versus Orange Frog. And so you'll be hearing a lot more about this over the next couple months. When you see the challenge poster and you hear about the challenges, you won't notice a difference. But I did want to let you know that we are working on a way to transition where it fits the Darlington County School District. It's been a great initiative over the past few years, but I think we all see the need to make it ours now and not necessarily attached to a brand. And that is everything that I have for today's In the Know. As I always say, hug on your family members. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them how much we appreciate them sharing you with us. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your April. Enjoy the warm weather. Let's hope for a little springtime weather with that. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next In the Know.